What's going on, everyone? You are tuned in to another episode of Road to Hollywood. I'm your host, Don Hafkin, and of course, sitting here beside me is the man himself, Mr. Tabari TV. What's up, dog? Hey, Tab. That's what's up, everybody. Check it out. We got one of the dopest casting directors in town. She's casting all the TV shows. All the movies, Raven Drummer, Jersey Girl was in the house. I love me some Raven. You girl. gotta love Raven. I she love got like that good energy, that she, good, sweet, wholesome energy. She has this energy. whole aura about herself that's just so positive and uplifting. That's I what's love up. Me. Hi, Raven, I love you. Fuck <laughs> me, girl. Okay. <laughs> she, she definitely came down here with her energy and, and, and gave, a, gave us a lot of information. So, y'all yeah. sit back, tune to this episode of Road to Hollywood. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Road to Hollywood. What's up, Don? What's, what's going on, Tam? You know, you know, I'm just here. What's going on with you? I see you on plane, trains, and automobiles. Again. <laughs> I mean, I'm all around the world. Thanks to God, I'm booking and Glory. busy. Glory, glory. Praise Him. Booked and busy over here. No doubt. Now, no doubt. I don't know if I should ask you, <laughs> Tab. What have you been doing? <laughs> Actually, you know what? I you and the fellas. The fellas. Stuff. Okay. No, no doubt, no doubt. So uh Lemon Karan, you know, Karan, Joseph Riley, one of our one of our Road to Hollywood guests and Lem Collins, they came together and they wrote a dope, dope television show and they brought me in the director pilot. Oh, well look yeah. at you. So that's what we were doing for the last couple of weeks. Shout out to all the fellas. It was um, an awesome event. It was awesome, man. We had uh, Rodney Perry came through, TC Carson, um, Jackie O. It was Rod Minker. It was that's good. That's it, good. To you know, hear. it was good to kind of see everybody kind of come together and kind of blast off. You well, know? I can't wait to see the finale. Yeah, the but final it, project. we're definitely going into post right now, and I can't wait to see the final um, project too. Okay. You well, know, man, congrats and much success to all the fellas. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Did you see Joaquin? Phoenix? Phoenix's speech yeah. on the what is it the British uh, Academy of Film, Film Television, Television and Arts. Arts. <laughs> he, when I tell you, I feel like that he is such. Um, I think I told you this earlier. How someone ha has asked me in an interview, have I ever received a role to where I feel like I let myself go? And I said, not just yet. But he is definitely that type of actor who's let himself go in different roles. You know, with the, the Joker, Joker was off the hook. Man. What the I was Joker. like, just sitting back, like, yo, like. I really commend him for taking that time to talk about diversity because yes. he didn't have to utilize his time to talk about that at all. You know, just like he said, he's, you know, he's on a different level. He's a white man and mm -hmm. he was saying how, you know, that they have to kind of break the change in the mm -hmm. system. I know even in Atlanta, there's been some shows that I've been and I'm the only black person in the room and it like bugs mm -hmm. me out because I feel like if you're in Atlanta, and I'm the only black person in the room, then there's definitely a, a, a systemic, you know, plan to that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I'm blessed to get the information, but it, it's like, man, come on, you know, we have, you know, directors, producers, you know, showrunners here also, and I, I really feel like, you know, I hope this triggers uh, an opening for, you know, more diversity in film and television. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I totally agree with yeah. you. Yeah, so one of your favorite people came down here, you know, Raven Drummer, and uh, Raven. you know, dropped some jewels on us, gave us some jewels about you know her casting process. I love Raven for the simple fact that I feel that she uh, she really does want to see Atlanta talent, and I'm not going to say Atlanta actors because I feel like that puts so many people uh, talent in the box here. Mm -hmm. She really wants to see Atlanta ta talent win. So Raven, thank you. I, there's so much more that I want to say to you. You know what? I forgot. I'm suing Raven. Why? I'm suing Raven because we were at a, a, a screening together right, and right, she was right. trying to get to one of her friends and she hit me in my back. Right? And you still got that scar? Yeah, I still got the scar. You see it? It's right here. So, Raven, I'm going to have my people call you. My, my lawyer's about to call you, girl. I don't know if that's like something that you want to kind of stumble She better book at. me on the next project then, and then we can drop the charges. <laughs> That sounds like extortion, and I don't want no part of it. So I'm everybody, sit back and watch this episode of Road to Hollywood. 
<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Road to Hollywood with the awesome Raven Drummer. I thank you for coming down and joining it's us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. No doubt, no doubt. Well, you're one of the people I wanted to bring on the show because your name has been like a consistent um, you know, with the guests, like everybody has, not everybody, but a lot of people have really good Raven drumming stories, and and I thought that would be Thank cool you. to kind of bring you up here. I feel honored. No, no, that's honored. what's up. And uh, I just want to kind of go all the way back. So you're a Jersey girl. Ger Jersey, born in Hackensack Hospital, <laughs> lived in East Orange. Uh, the family's from, I'm from East Orange. I'm yeah, from, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, so that's what's up. So and then you went to um, University of Virginia. Yes, yes. Yes. When you were in University of Virginia, did you realize that this was going to be your path or what was going on there? Well, I thought I went to become a doctor. Oh, like, okay. the whole plan was for me to go go to medical school, you know, deliver babies. That was the whole plan. <laughs> and then I um, took chemistry, 141, <laughs> and I failed it. And so I took it again, and I failed it again. And I'm like, you know, this is probably not the road for me. And I'll never forget, my mother was like, you know what, like, stop thinking about medicine, like, just take a semester, you take all the classes that interest you. Right. And so I kind of, like, submerged myself in the drama department, and I never left, and I ended up being, becoming a theater major. That's what's up. So when you were in there, it was it supposed to be in front of the camera, or what was going on? It was a little bit, I've always loved and had an interest in directing, so I did some acting while I was at UVA, but I also did a lot of producing and directing. So when you when you came to Atlanta, was getting into the film and the television industry, was that part of the plan or you kind of stumbled yeah, I came to Atlanta for the film and television industry, industry and specifically for Tyler Perry Studios. So I ended up getting an internship like about a month or two before I graduated from college. And the whole plan was like, you know what, go to Atlanta, do this internship for the summer, and then come back to Jersey, find something in New York. Okay. And so after the summer was over, I was like, well, let me just stay in Atlanta to see what happens. So you did the internship in Did then. the internship. Okay. And so then, can I get some years and dates? So, what, so yes. what was that? So, and this is like, like, to give you very specific, I graduated college May 20th, 2007. Okay. I moved to Atlanta June 1st, 2007, so like exactly two weeks later, and started working June 4th. So you were with the Crock Street crew? Yes, I was with the Crock Street crew. Okay. And I, so when I came in, um, it was, they were, we were on House of Pain, the first season, 100 episodes. Okay. Um, and so that was, yeah, so that was summer 2007. The plan was to just like go back to New Jersey, and then I just ended up staying in Atlanta. And twelve and a half years later, I'm still twelve here. And a, maybe <laughs> a, a great, a great, great decision. A yes. great decision. Yes. So I met you because when I, I came with the Greenbrier crew. You know yes, what I'm saying? So yes. in the open end of the Green Briar crew. And at that time I think you were doing you were being a, you were an assistant. Yep, I was a casting assistant. And, yeah. All right, so and so so tell me how, you know, when you got up to Tyler Perry Studios, was it overwhelming or just It was like the thing that was amazing to me, like I was so green. Like I knew nothing, <laughs> nothing about this industry. So I actually started off interning under um, Roger Bob okay. and um, and Ruben Cannon. So I would kind of like intern and then Alpha Tyler. So those are the three I would kind of like intern with for the first couple of, about the first year of me working there. And I just never experienced anything in film, the pacing of it, yeah, the, the, pacing the 12 is to 14, I, like all of it, I was like, it was definitely like me completely just kind of jumping into the deep end. Um, but it was exactly what I needed. That's what's exactly up, that's what's up. I, um, I remember, uh, you know, the 2008 crew, and I remember almost I don't know what show it was on, but I remember the day you got kicked up to like the casting director. <laughs> Everybody was like, "It's on, it's on." So you, what show yeah. was what show were we on? So we were. It was it was uh, for better or worse. Okay. It was for better or okay, worse. Okay, okay. Yeah, for better or worse, and it was just like, here you go, and it and it and even like another like not knowing what you needed. Like I needed that whole experience transition it really like i feel like i grew up like yeah. it, it was 2011 i feel like i went from assistant to casting director and i really grew up fast you know making that transition so is that like tell me about like a casting director for people that don't know like yeah. what exactly is your role in and in, in, in the part of filmmaking and television production. A friend of mine explained that he's like, we're like the human resources of talent. <laughs> so I like our, that. Yes, so <laughs> our job is to scout, cultivate, and find the best talent 
for roles for film and TV and plays and whatnot. And so we bring the creatives, the producers, the best talent, and then they make a decision based on what we've gathered. Okay, so do you have unconventional ways that you go? How do you look for talent? <laughs> Very. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have done everything to, our traditional way is, um, there's a service called Breakdown Services or Breakdown Express and agents can submit their talent for roles that we release. Um, or there's also Actors Access, so if you don't have an agent, you can submit directly to us via Actors Access and I'll post all the roles that we're auditioning on Actors Access so you can see them. Um, other untraditional ways, like I've gone to YouTube, I have gone to um, like barbershops and gyms and you name it, looking for talent. So yes, so we have it, to get creative sometimes. It, does that become overwhelming that that, that people are always kind of at you to 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 get roles? You, you know, I say it's, it's a lot of information at once. Like for instance, we're getting information from producers like about what they're looking for. And then we're getting information from the agents. And then we're getting information from actors. And then it's like Instagram and Facebook and email. So it's a lot of people coming at you and asking about like, hey, can I come in for this? Or can she read for this? So it's it can be overwhelming. I think at this point I've kind of learned how to how to pace myself yeah. and how to how to navigate through it. Navigate through it. Yeah. So I mean, I was looking at your IMDb, and you know, yeah. within I, I know you know up at the studio, it's always like lightning in a bottle. That's why I used to call it yeah. because it's this you know it's show after show after show. But your discography has you know just multiplied substantially in yeah. the last last couple of years. Yeah. Even when I was working as a casting assistant, like I remember having a conversation with Alpha, and she was like, you know, the amount of TV or films that you've done as a casting assistant, like she hadn't done that in like years, yeah. you know, and so and it's just because of how fast we work. So I've lost count of the number. Now, I was, you know, I, I haven't I, been up there in in, in years, but yeah. I, I was at a point of like um, like like over 300 shows and yeah. oh, gosh. five movies in regards to <laughs> my short stint there. And I it's would, just like such a yeah. intense learning ground. I feel yeah. like I should have been paying them for the amount of, <laughs> yes. you know, stuff that I was, you know, involved in. I know, I remember when there was a cake for like 700 episodes. Right. And that was like four years ago. <laughs> so I'm like, it has to be in the thousands by now. I just don't know what that number is. Is there so. a different, um, when you, are you just looking for talent when, is there a different way from like television to um, film? Or are you looking for different things or? You know, I feel like the same principles apply for like TV and film. I think the biggest difference is when we're doing like theater versus television okay. or film. Because we're looking for, oftentimes we are looking for the triple threat. We are looking for the, someone who can Thing and maybe so if, if you don't realize that I, I, I um, that Raven also um, casts the the, the plays. plays, yes, you know, yes. so that that's what we're talking about right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like when we're looking for talent, when we're cast a play, we are looking for something different. Mm -hmm. First, pretty much TV and film, mm -hmm. we're looking for you know strong actors versus mm -hmm. looking for actors that can do more than just act for the plays. Okay. For everybody, I want you to give them your audition tips. Like, what <laughs> what would be your 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 audition tips for people that are coming to like an audition and yeah. you know they have it you know had an audition with you? Oh, there's so many. Um, well, but give I me give say, me three. Give me your, your three. Uh, one confidence goes a long way, a long way, um, and confidence in knowing that if you have been gifted to be an actor, to be a performer, then trust in that gift and have confidence that you're supposed to be in the room auditioning for that role. And also know that I would not bring you in for a role that I did not think you had a good chance of booking. Okay. So the fact that you've already gotten the audition is a win. So okay. don't let all the negative fears get in the way of what's already yours. Um, two, it would be over prepare. Okay. Um, I think that, and, and learn how to prepare correctly. I think that a lot of actors um, think that preparing is just memorizing and making sure they learn their lines. And so what we see in an audition is actors make, try to make sure that they get the lines right and they're not being honest. And so learn proper techniques of preparation. Um, and then my third tip would be give yourself a break. And what I mean by that is like give yourself time. So many actors want it to happen yesterday. Right. 
So many actors put a lot of unneeded stress on themselves to make it to book right now instead of taking the marathon instead of like okay you know what i'm on mile one and i got a call back yay me you know so it would be give yourself some time to let yourself like this is a lifetime this is yeah. you know we can go through the list of how many actors made it after they turn 40 you know so made it after they turn 40 so it's like give yourself some some time to to grow those are some awesome tips and i i think it's so genuine because I, you know, being in auditions, I've been in auditions with you. Yeah. Um, and I, I see people, they bring the weight of the world into yes. the audition. And, and that's clearly that. visible. Yes. It's clearly visible like that. Yeah. You you think this role right here is going to pay your bills. And yes. It's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. Yeah. And it doesn't translate. Well, I, had a, um, I had a friend of mine that she was like, that's how she was in every audition. And was like, you know, she would... She would, you know, have an audition and be like, "Oh, I didn't get the role." And it was yeah. like, "Okay, yeah, like." And it's like that's the job. <laughs> like that's that's, the job. that's what it is. <laughs> like your job is to audition. Okay. Like your job as an actress to audition. Yes, booking is wonderful, and we want you all to book. But the actual job is auditioning. And so if you don't get it, that's just a part of what you signed up for. That's what's up, man. So I, in recent years, I've seen you start developing your own and yes. your own content. So yes, tell me yes, about yes. that. Yeah, I say about four or five years ago, I started writing writing and then co-writing and and producing my own content as a way of challenging myself as a way of like remaining creative um, and it's something that I'm looking to do more and I realized how working in casting has definitely helped me with that creative process as well for sure so I mean that has that stretched you yes it's like me developing my own projects has absolutely stretched me like when I did my first um, project was just called Good Girls. I was like, you know what? I'll write and direct and produce and <laughs> craft give it, craft it, I'll do it all. Hair, makeup. <laughs> yes, everything, literally. Wardrobe, you name it. And what I realized, I was on, and I acted in it too. And so I realized, I was, no, I was really, yeah, I did really, like, really, it was, it was way too much. <laughs> and I was like, I was acting paying attention to the other actors' performances to make sure that as a director they were doing what yeah. I was looking for and I was completely not in the scene. Mm. And so I was like, you know what? If I put on so many hats, one thing is going to falter. Something is not going to be done to the best of my ability because I'm focused on this. So it was just a stretch even learning, you know, like I need to allow, get, bring some other people on, give them some responsibilities so I don't have everything on myself. Whenever you need help, you know gotcha. what I'm saying? You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Just yes. holla at me. I got you. <laughs> yes. I got you. Um, so, um, you, I, I see that you went down to Sundance. Like, how was yes. that experience? Amazing. It was my first time at Sundance. It was overwhelming. It was everything I needed it to be. I, like, I, the reason why I went is because so many people's careers have made a big leap and transition at Sundance. Okay. And I just wanted to see like what that was all about. And I get it now. I get it's kind of like this way to start off the year conversions of opportunities and, and projects and everybody's in one space. So it's this is, it was great. I would highly recommend it. Um, I got a chance to see some really good films, so it was good. That's what's up, man. Um, so what is next on the horizon yeah. for you? more creating so i have some projects that i am developing in the works um and i really really like and i haven't i filmed two projects outside of atlanta in new york and so i'm like i haven't filmed anything in atlanta in a while so i want to really get back to atlanta and really kind of exploring atlanta stories so atlanta based stories how incredible is that you know I, I guess you're on the same you've been doing this about the same time as that's like this mega of yeah. film and television wasn't here. Like how At has all. that been, you know, for you to kind of see the growth of, you know, yeah. this city in television and, and film production? It's been amazing to see, but I still want more. Does that make sense? No, like, no, 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 no. You know, and like I, I love the fact that so many productions are here. Mm -hmm. Um but I also think that I want more things to be greenlit here yeah. as well. So, and that's what that's what I say. I say that um 
you know, for the tax incentive, like a lot of times, like people come here, they um, they use our crew, they use our location, they use our yeah. resources, but the the decision making isn't. Yes, here. like yeah. the the creative birthing of a project, the writing, the pitching, like all of that still is not happening here, and I would love to see some of those things brought into Atlanta as well. So you know, like you know, if you're a writer here, it's kind of hard. Like there's no writer's room, you know, or the fact that it's like okay, I still have to go to LA to pitch my project or whatever it is so I I'm excited to see like I think we've made huge leaps yeah but I think that we still have some places where we can go as well definitely like I you know I I'm a person that like thought this where we were gonna be now was gonna happen about six years ago mm. so I was just like now I get like you know just the different cultures and yeah. diff what's going on but what I've watched is the exponential growth of you know just the studios yes. and um, and everybody is heading here. All the big, yeah. all the big companies are getting offices and stuff. So I think you know, within a matter of time, that they're gonna have to understand that one, you know, it's more cost effective to shoot here pretty much than anywhere in the country right now. Yeah. And that you know, you might as well set up shop and, and, and make it your best here. Absolutely. And start like let's bring on some directors, you know, so you don't have to fly every single director from LA hey. for a show. Hey. You know, I'm, or I'm if here. you set up a writer's room here. <laughs> Like let's you know, like I think those things are producers, like those are things that I think will really transform the city as well. That's what's up. So in closing, yeah. um, what tips would you give uh, you know, somebody that is, you know, not just an actor, but somebody that is trying to get into the entertainment field and um, you know, today mm -hmm. in this today's climate? Um produce your work. <laughs> and, okay. and I and this is something like I have to tell myself too. It's just, just like get it out there and I think like that's something that I learned at Sundance like I'm looking at people who finished mm -hmm. that's what it is like whatever they they set out to do something and they finished and you're going to learn something even if your project doesn't end up getting Academy Award or Emmys whatever it is like you will absolutely learn so much in the doing of it and that is the point mm -hmm. that is the point so um, but I think in order to learn that you have to you have to do so get to that project get to writing it get to filming it get to producing it and marketing it and then learn as you go yeah with me you know that's what I did like right in the middle of uh, you know PA mm -hmm. at, at TPS like I, I made breaking up is hard to do and yeah. you never know you know what I'm saying like never. you know in the situation with that we struck a little bit of lightning and it, it definitely was that it was going to the film festivals learning how to market learning how screenings and seeing how all of those things like come together so I think that is some wise information yes. Raven I really appreciate you coming My and and hanging out with us and Dawn definitely told me to tell you what's up. <laughs> but um yes, this was an awesome episode of Road to Hollywood and I thank all you guys for tuning in. <laughs> See I got you off the hot seat. Yes, <laughs> yes, I enjoyed that. We're back, we're back, we're back. I told you, man, Raven be giving us the jewels. Raven is the truth. No doubt, no doubt. And I want to thank Raven Drummer for coming down here, um, you know, taking time out of her busy, busy schedule to uh, spend some time with us and give us information and give the information to the people. Absolutely. I mean, I don't have anything else to say. She's the truth. I love her and she is heaven sent. No doubt, no doubt. And Dawn said, oh, she'll see you at the next audition. <laughs> I just play it. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. But, thank uh, you, Raven. And thank you all for watching this episode of Road to Hollywood. Please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and, 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 and all of that. Just pass it on to your friends. All of that. All of that. All, all of, of that. All of that. All of that. <laughs> all of that. Give, give us some love out there. Give us some love. And we thank you always for um, tuning in to Road to Hollywood. Peace.